Let's have a quick talk about Jason Nash. Do you ever think about like, hey, I used to have one of the biggest podcasts. Oh in my the world. god, all the time. <laughs> and now you're in a shed. <laughs> <laughs> no, it gave me a complex because like right. he walked away from millions of dollars and all he had to do was talk to me for 40 minutes a week. <laughs> <laughs> As most of you guys already know, Jason Nash is live 24-7. The same sample. It KS! 20 seconds left. And a lot of people have been bashing him, making fun of him, because he's been live all the time. And it's not a typical live. He's basically panhandling on TikTok. Now, if you listen to his podcast, you would know that he's doing this because he needs the money. I miss the I miss the podcast. I wish he I miss the money of the podcast. <laughs> I see Jason say this on a TikTok clip like every other week. And all the larger creators that are making fun of him, you know, they're not in his situation. Can someone make Jason Nash a fucking DoorDash account? If I open my TikTok one more time to seeing him begging for roses on my live for you page, I'm calling CPS. Jason Nash is extremely well known. And so you would think because he's so well known that he would have a lot of money and wouldn't need to be panhandling on TikTok. But what you don't know is that behind the scenes, David Dobrik was raking in all this money, but he wasn't getting a cut of it. So yes, he's got a lot of people watching him because they know him through David Dobrik. And if you've been living under a rock, David Dobrik is just a horrible human being. He got extremely canceled and he basically quit YouTube. He stopped his podcast. He stopped posting any videos. He basically went MIA on every social media platform. Most of his money comes from Snapchat. And this also ties into why your favorite YouTuber posts 800 Snapchats a day because that's how they get paid. And with the Snapchat CPMs and RPMs being so much higher than YouTube, it's a no brainer, right? Low effort, high reward. Jason Nash, he should be set for life, I, in my opinion. I think he contributed enough. He was there with David Dobrik, even through the tough time. He was probably the last person to go against David. All of David's original vlog squad, they already off, they're off the ship. They hate him now. They they publicly shame him. And Jason was probably the last one to do it. Nice I was, and then it wasn't going well, so I got off. <laughs> Dude, you're kind of becoming a legend on TikTok now. I know. Not, not in a good way. Yeah, but I, I think it's fun. He probably had that glimmer of hope that maybe David would open his eye and be like, well, you're a really good friend. Maybe I should actually pay you for the contributions that you've done. But now we're left with the clip of Jason basically saying how out of touch David is and how horrible a person he is and why he needs to stream 24-7. Yeah, he calls me to play pool, and I'm like... I uh, gotta go live, and, <laughs> and I don't, and I don't expect him to understand that. Like I, yeah. I know I've told him. There's also things that I like say to him, and I'm not sure if he hears me. Like I'll say things like, "I'm losing my house," <laughs> and, and he'll be like, "Oh, but just come play pool." <laughs> I used to stream a lot during musically days. I used to stream eight hours a day, and it is very draining. I actually ended up losing my mind. Streaming eight hours a day, especially if it's your only source of income and you're getting hate on top of that, it's very detrimental to your mental health. So sure, on one end, you could definitely criticize Jason for what he's doing. He's basically just panhandling. Sure, it could be criticized, but I think it reaches a new level when these famous creators are publicly bashing him and telling them to do you know, to go take care of his kids. He, he is taking care of his kids. He pays for their school. He has to provide for his family and his home. He has to pay for his home. So yes, he is taking care of his kids ultimately. And it's a little sad that this is what he's come to. If David Dobrik was to set anyone up for life, it should have been Jason. He was his literally biggest ride or die. He stuck with them till the end. Now he has to resort to streaming on TikTok for eight hours and to to pay his bills. So being on the internet, of course, you can get trolls, haters, and people making fun of you. That's just part of the gig. But I feel like people in this space that we are all in need to be a little bit more mindful. He's obviously struggling. He wants to start a new career path for himself instead of being David Dobrik's sidekick. And I hope at the end of the day, he does end up succeeding. But anyways, have you guys seen Jason Nash live? What do you guys think about his live streams? Let me know down below and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.